Hallelujah. Okay. We, we're moving. And, and, and we don't, if you want some recap, some review, you're going to have to go to last week's message because today we got to jump right on in and we're going to jump right on in. So what I want you to do is I want you to go with me to, again, the book of Ephesians, Ephesians chapter six, Ephesians chapter six. And I want you to start and I want you to look with me at verse 11, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. All right. So now, first thing we want to we want to deal with, and that is this fact, this truth. Your battles with humans, your battles in life, your battles start with these wicked principalities, these wicked powers of darkness, these wicked evil spirits, these, these fallen angelic beings, these rulers of the darkness of this world, this spiritual wickedness in high places. When we understand that behind every scenario that's negative, every scenario that creates doubt and fear, behind every phobia, behind every just everything that's dysfunctional is an evil spirit. It's a spirit of wickedness. It is a spirit on assignment against your life from Satan. And God says, there's some wrestling going on. You know, there's, there's, there's wrestling going on against these spiritual wickedness, all of this, all of these demonic forces. They're, they're, every battle, every Every agitation in your life, every annoyance in your life is rooted and grounded in Satan releasing on you, in your life, an evil spirit. These evil, dark forces from Satan are sent to literally fire missiles of evil wickedness, organize campaigns of evil doing against your life literally to try to stop you from manifesting the glory of God that's in your life, the power of your connection with Jesus Christ. Satan is at 24-7 trying these schemes and these, these wicked inventions and this, this trickery, deception to try to get you and I to keep us from operating at our A-game level, operating at our peak of Christ likeness. That's why as we study the word of God, that's why as we begin to pray more, that's why as we begin to obey more, literally Satan is defenseless against us. And actually, he's scared of you. Satan is scared of the believers that suit up and put on that whole armor, understanding what that armor can do and then operating in that armor, literally resisting and rebuking Satan's attacks all of his schemes, all of his wicked plans. And I'm telling you right now, God says automatically, you are victorious because you got on that whole armor. So I'm just going to say this here. As we deal with this tonight, as we as we come on and, and start operating in the things of God, and watch this here. When we start realizing that, that God's power, God's authority, God's anointing, has given us the power and the ability to quench all of the fiery darts of the wicked one. You and I have the ability to thwart, to outsmart, to outlast, to outmaneuver every attack of Satan against our lives. Not only our lives, we now can inform our family, our friends, even our enemies, how Satan operates, how he works. Not only are we able to thwart Satan's attacks, but we are able to suppress his attacks. That means, oh, this is good. That means when he comes against you, if you don't lose your cool and, and you know what I mean, and, and if you don't you know, get out of your Christian identity, if you don't fall out of your Christian place, if you don't, if you don't lose focus on your authority in God, if you don't, if you don't now, you know what I mean, operate in, 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 in if, if you don't operate in confidence and in, in victory, 
then Satan gets the upper hand. But if you choose to operate in your authority, choose to operate in your, your identity in God, choose to operate in the position and the place that God has put you in, when you choose to operate fearless in the face of all of those fiery darts of the devil, you will literally quench every dart. You will literally extinguish every attack. You will, you will, you will literally defeat Satan in every area of your life, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically, financially, in your relationships, in your productivity in life, whether it's your career, whether it's your, your having done all the stand. God has given us, you and me, we have been given the entire armor of God. And we're going to deal with that armor. And when you start talking about being able to quench all of the fiery darts of the enemy, to, 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 to extinguish them, to suppress them, and to thwart them. That means you are in such a place of invincibility. And God is saying, you got to believe in it. You got to accept it. You got to trust that what God did for Jesus, what God gave to Jesus, you know, Jesus had this, this, this same armor on. But Jesus was the manifestation of it. He showed us how to operate it. You know, he, Jesus is salvation. Jesus is the righteousness of God. Jesus is the truth of God. Jesus brought forth the gospel of peace. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus is the word of God. The spoken word of God. Jesus is the author and the finisher of faith. So Jesus is the armor in operation. It's the armor of life. Now, we, 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 it's so vitally important that you embrace this thrival mentality. It's so vitally important that you set your goals to have a thrival lifestyle. It is so vitally important that you understand that you are a survivor, that it is impossible for Satan to win in your life unless you let him, unless you just don't know how to defeat him. But from this moment forward, moving forward, God is stirring the word of God in your spirit, stirring the word of God in your thinking, stirring the word of God in your emotions, putting you in a position to where you say, glory to God, I am more than a conqueror. I am an overcomer. So there's nothing that Satan has done, nothing that he is doing that can overcome you because you have faith and you have the playbook, you have the formula of Jesus Christ. Remember, Jesus is that armor in action. So when you read through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and you start seeing how, how Satan got dealt with by Jesus, when you, you read through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and you look at Jesus, and, <laughs> you know what I mean, and how, you know what I mean, he dealt with the attacks of the enemy, the attacks of Satan, and how Jesus extinguished every attack of the devil, suppressed every attack of the devil, thwarted every attack of the devil. You know, I, I'm reminded when Jesus, you know, cast that demon out, that guy, and, 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 and he cast the spirits, them evil spirits now, them evil spirits said, oh, 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 Jesus, Jesus, don't, don't cast us in the out of darkness. Can we go into the pigs? Jesus said, all right, go ahead. You can go into the pigs. And when them demon spirits went into the, them pigs, them pigs went crazy. They was like, we got to get them out of us. And them pigs ran off the cliff and drowned in the ocean beneath. Now, the people got upset. They was like, oh, 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 no, you got to go. Let me tell you something right now. Let me tell you something right now. When you and God keep getting tight and tighter, and you begin to now operate in that armor, let me tell you something right now. Satan will not be able to dominate you, to dominate your life, to dominate in your environments, wherever you go. As the scripture says, every place the soles of your feet tread upon, 
that I have given you. In other words, God is saying, I'm with you, I'm for you, and I'm going to do miracles in your life. I'm going to turn and I'm going to, I'm going to show you how to suppress all of Satan's attacks, his thoughts, his doubts, his fears that he fires into your life, fires into your mind in every circumstance and situation to try to get you not to walk in your authority, not to express that armor, not to express yourself the way Jesus did. And so God says, look, I'm with you. Do not be afraid. I'm with you. Understand, understand the breastplate of righteousness. I'm with you. Understand what your loins being girt with truth, being supported by the truth. Understand how that affects the enemy when you do battle, when you rebuke and resist. Remember double R, okay? God has said, understand what that shield of faith does. Understand what your feet being prepared with the gospel of peace. Understand what that sword of the spirit does in the midst of battle. We're talking about putting on this whole armor. It's, it's pillar number five, suiting up, putting on the armor. And, and it's God's armor. And we're fighting with God's might. We're fighting with God's power. So the battle is not yours. The battle is the Lord's when we begin to operate this armor. But we got to understand it. When we begin to operate our faith, when we, well, listen, when you suited up with this whole armor on, and you know, look at this here. Go with me. I'm in, I'm in Ephesians. I'm in Ephesians. And, and, and I'm going to start at verse 11. Now listen to this. Listen, listen to what knowing how you're armed and equipped by God, notice what it does with your prayer life. Oh, sweet Jesus. Notice what it does with your praise and worship life. Oh, glory to God. And then notice the impact that it has on your life, on the life of your family on the life of your friends, on the life of strangers. You come in suited up. You come in with all that armor on. Listen, all of them spiritual wickedness and them evil spirit, they know you. They like, oh, shucks, here come a child of God. This one is active. This one has, this one has active faith. This one you got to be careful with because they know how to rebuke and they know how to resist and they know how to release their faith. They know how to stand on the word of God. They got patience built up. They, oh my God, these people ain't no joke. They, they understand how to wield that sword. They know the damage that the spoken word will do in a spiritual battle. Let's read, watch this here. Oh, this is amazing. This is, this is some powerful stuff. I'm, I'm gonna start at, I'm gonna start again at verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord, and in the power of his might. Listen, Satan now dealing with you from a whole different vantage point. He's under your feet because you're operating and have learned how to operate in the might of God. You've learned and you got to go back to those previous, those previous lessons, like, like parts 18, 19, where we dealt with this in detail. Look at this here. Verse 11, put on the whole armor of God, not half of it, not just the part that you like, you got to put the whole armor on that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. The evil trickery. I called it the, the wicked deceptions. We called it wickedry. You know what I mean? That, that wickedry, that, that, that all of Satan's abilities coming against you. Deception, intimidation, aggravation. Just the warfare. It's like, it's like, it's like this dude, he just, he don't get it. I'm going to tell you why. Okay, please don't take this person. All right? Because this is not meant to be personal. It's not meant to hurt you. But the reason why Satan is attacking you so hard is because you're not attacking them back as hard as he's attacking you. See, when, when, when you don't, when you don't stand with the whole armor on, and you only got partial armor, partial faith in the armor, partial, you know what I mean? You partially praise, you partially prayer, you, 
you partially do the things that God has told you to do to strengthen you so that you could overcome that devil and, and hurt him so bad that when he flee, it takes him a while to recoup. So if you're not putting, you know what I mean, a uh, A-level whooping on him in the scripture like Jesus did, you look at Jesus' life, Satan, when Satan caught that beat down from Jesus, he left for a season, but, but he didn't just come back immediately. You got to be so on point with your spiritual weaponry, with your spiritual operations, with your spiritual responses. You know what I mean? Like God said, whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. In other words, God says, I got your back. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit says, you speak in the name of Jesus and you hitting that devil like, like one of them wrecking balls. Boom. You hitting this cat so hard in the word that it does damage to him, damage to his kingdom. Let me just say this here. And the more people you tell about God, the more people you witness to Jesus, and witness about Jesus, Satan now got to go and try to put them, he got he, he to gotta try to now dry them out. Because you don't, you don't, you don't release all of that Holy Ghost water, that 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 living water on them. You, you know what I mean? Satan, he got he, he got to back up off of you because he got to go and try to undo what you're doing for the glory of God. And so, yeah, he's going to attack you. But man, when you start rebuking him and resisting him, and you're witnessing to people and encouraging people to get stronger and closer to God, that's some active warfare on your part. You now operating in overcoming mode because you overcome by the blood of Jesus and the word of your testimony. All of a sudden now, Satan is too busy trying to stop what you done released. You on the offensive, he's on the defensive. See, and that's where we want to keep this guy. We want to keep him on the defensive. He concerned with how we coming at him. You, you starting to pray more, you praising more, you reading your Bible more, you believe in what God is saying about you, and now you're going to start acting on it in Jesus' name. You got all the authority and the power of heaven backing you. So when the Bible says, look, look whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven, whatever you loose on earth is loose in heaven, God says, I got your back. I'm going to perform my word in your life with signs and wonders following because you speaking in the name of Jesus, you, 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 oh my God, everything, you're doing everything for the glory of God in Jesus' name, and you operating that armor. Let's, let's, let's read. See that, put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers. These are these spiritual forces, these evil spirits, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. B listen. Satan is using people. He's using people in your life. They being deceived. They puppets of the devil. They, you know what I mean? So all these people that's doing some shady, slick stuff at you, they ain't doing that because God's trying to teach you something through them. They're doing that because Satan is trying to use them to destroy and disrupt your flow in God. Disrupt your peace. Disrupt your joy. Hallelujah. And we stop, we putting a stop to that. Because we got on the whole arm of God, man. We thrivers. We creating a thrival lifestyle. There's not, there's no area that Satan can come in and dominate in your life, in our lives, not no more. We're not ignorant now. We we know we wait. But that was real stupid. We awoke. No, our eyes are open. All right, I take that back. That you, you know what I meant though, right? Your eyes is open. To the truth of God. So now watch this here. Wherefore, verse 13, take unto you the whole armor of God. Watch this here. Not partial armor now. You're getting this whole thing. You got to just say, okay, God, equip me. I want to be equipped to win. I want to be equipped to overcome in any situation, in any conflict with Satan and with whoever Satan sends. I need to recognize it. I need to now get the, get the formula to defeat it, to suppress it. To, to literally extinguish it, to thwart the plan of the enemy, all right? So let me see. He says, wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, verse 13, that you may be able to withstand, oh, sweet Jesus. The whole armor will give you the ability to withstand any attack of the enemy. Because because now the enemy's coming up against all that weaponry that, that God has given you. 
And when you look at Jesus, you see that weapon, you see that armor in real life. And then God says, now you imitate Jesus. You speak to the devil the way Jesus did. You speak to the devil's kids the way Jesus did. You speak to the elements the way Jesus did. You speak to demons the way Jesus did. You speak to the hurt and the hurting the way Jesus did. Bring all that compassion, bring all that love, bring all them answers, bring all that formula of Jesus to the situation and watch God do the miracles that you saw Jesus doing. Watch God begin to do those in your life. You talking about getting excited? Man, you God keep answering your prayers. God keep turning things around, especially the worst of situations. And the more God manifests that power and glory and turns that situation around, that is designed to make you love God more, obey God more. It's the design, it's, it's the goodness of God that causes us to repent. So you look at your life and you see all of the goodness of God, you start rejoicing and praising God. Listen, you you just too strong for the devil. I'm going to tell you right now, you, right now. Okay, hold, watch this here. Right here, right now. You too strong for them. You stronger than Satan through Jesus Christ, through your faith in Jesus Christ. So look at this here. So having done all to stand, stand. So in the evil day, this is an evil day, y'all. This is really an evil day. Okay, you know, before people was like, ah, you know, it ain't that bad. Things is bad out there right now. Things is bad on all levels. I mean, I mean, there's so much craziness going on. Things are bad in families. Things are bad in careers. Things are bad. No, not all, but there's so much bad. People are just, people are afraid right now. People are so concerned. The, the wickedness is off the rails right now. You know, Satan had tried to turn the world into one great big Sodom and Gomorrah. I'm and listen. Wickedness and corruption. All right, I'm going to say this here because the Holy Ghost just says, say this here. See, when you got born again, God changed the nature of your heart. If a person is not born again, if they have not made Jesus their Lord and Savior, if they have not submitted to Jesus Christ and received by the power of the Holy Spirit uh, the new nature, the nature of God, then the nature that is in man without Jesus is a nature of wickedness, evil, hatred, murder, jealousy envy, competition. It is, Jesus said it like this here. It's not what you put in the man that defiles a man or corrupts a man. It's what comes out of the man, out of the, out of the heart of man. The heart of man is desperately evil and wicked. And the tongue is the igniter. It's the torch. It's the one that releases all of that evil and wickedness of Satan, that nature of Satan comes out through the mouth and then is seen through the expression of life, the activities, the behavior of life. Anybody that does not have Jesus as their Lord and Savior has not received the spirit of God, has not received the nature of God, the heart is desperately wicked. So that's what people say, well, where's all this wickedness coming from? It's coming from the heart of man. And Satan is the one that tries to siphon that wickedness out of the heart of man and get Mankind expressing the evil thoughts, the evil nature, and the evil ways of Satan. That's why if you look now it's in society all around the world, people are doing some of the most wicked stuff, especially here in America, where America at one time was the, was the paragon of truth. I mean, we was pumping out the gospel for the Lord Jesus Christ and the Father God and the Holy Spirit. We was pumping out the gospel, sending missionaries all over the world. America was really evangelizing. Now, Satan then got in there ever since he kicked, ever since Satan got politicians, his children, to get prayer out of school, the, the, the nation has taken a nosedive, and America affects the whole entire world. But we as Christians, we're taking some things back. We're standing and we're bringing that truth, but you got to stand with the whole armor on. If you're going to bring truth, you got to have that whole armor on so that you can withstand all of the attacks of the enemy. So watch this here. So now it says, having done all the stand, look at this here, verse 14. Stand therefore with your loins girt about with truth. So the first part of this armor 
is having your appetites, your reproductive, your, your, your ability to create and procreate, your ability to, and to, your ability to demonstrate and grow. And so it's got to be in truth. That's the first thing, truth. Your loins, that's that's your hip region. That that's the that's the the foundation of your movement. The foundation and the expression of your ability to multiply, to expand, to grow, to procreate, to, to release the enlargement of God, the expansion of God. Your expansion starts with the truth of God loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness this is this is your heart this is your chest area this is this is your love this is your this is this is the fabric of how you stand it and why you're standing in the righteousness of god this is all mental spiritual this here this is identity so when we start talking about righteousness in your heart of hearts, you've been born again. You understand now that a part of your submitting to Jesus Christ and, and understanding this armor, it has made you right with God. You have right standing with God through Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus has made you able to stand before God without the feeling of guilt. You've been justified. Oh, we're going to deal with this here. And, and you got to know this in your heart. You got you to, gotta, once you know it in your heart, and you start saying this and accepting this in your heart, you're going to feel this in your life. Oh, yeah. Let me tell you something. Feeling righteous in God and before God because of Jesus Christ, because of what he did, when you can grow your understanding and faith to the fact that you realize that God has forgiven you, God has declared you righteous, God has positioned you in, 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 in the way that you're supposed to be, restored you, restored me, Oh, you talking about joy and freedom and peace to go out there and battle for the glory of God, battle in the name of Jesus and win and conquer Satan and every fiery missile, every situation and circumstance, everything that he does when you recognize Satan, I see you. I see you through them. I see you through her. I see you through him. I see you through this situation. And I take authority over you right now in Jesus name. As you and I begin to operate in that righteous understanding, it's a game changer. It is a game changer. Look at what he goes on to say. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. See, the more you know this word, the more you hear this word, when you come up against situations where Satan is coming in there trying to disrupt the peace, trying to mess up the flow, trying to bring agitation, and you can come and drop the gospel, any scripture that identifies and deals with whatever circumstance and situation you're dealing with, when you insert the word of God, the promise of God, the authority of God, the will of God in that situation, in Jesus' name, then God can go to work. The spirit of God can go to work. The, the Holy Spirit can now bind up with the power of heaven, with the power of God, Every evil spirit you bind, the Holy Spirit can now release the glory and the anointing as you now not only bind up the enemy, but release the power and the glory and the formula and solution, the, the end result, promise of God in those scenarios. And now you full of faith. You got great faith. You praising. You worshiping. You done prayed. You glorifying God. You resisting. And rebuking that devil, you command him what he can do and cannot do. You you speak in the end result, you prophesying in the middle of that situation, the end result promise of God, your life is gonna get your life is beautiful. You full of happiness, full of joy, full of confidence, full of conviction that you don't battle alone. You don't battle with your own strength, you don't battle with your own intellect, you don't battle with your own influence you battling with the might of god you battling with the influence of god you battling with the authority of god man if that don't set you in a place of 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 renewed confidence and fearlessness and 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 just absolute peace 
in the midst of the conflict. It can be the easiest conflict you've dealt with or the worst. It doesn't matter. It doesn't. The conflict, the fiery darts of Satan does not throw you out of the peace that God has given you. But because you've been educated and because you know, and when I say educated, I'm talking about educated spiritually. Because you've been educated to this truth and you believe it and you ask God to perform their word in your life with signs and wonders following. Let me tell you what the result is going to be. God is going to confirm that word. He's going to answer and he's going to fulfill every promise. The Holy Spirit will fulfill every promise that Jesus made. The Holy Spirit will fulfill. He will rearrange things in your life to fulfill every promise that the Father has made, every promise that you know. And as the scripture says, you will know this truth. And when you know this truth and believe this truth and expect and, 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 and do what this truth says do, this truth will set you free. Let me just remind you, this is 2023 and we walk in humble and free in 2023. Why? Because we got on this whole armor and we understand how this armor works. So look at this here. So your feet shod, verse 15, with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Boy, when we get down here and we start dealing with this here, especially this word peace, irene, that's what it means in the Greek. Oh my God, there's 14 definitions. This thing means 14 things. That the gospel, when you start speaking it to Satan, to your circumstance, to yourself, to your enemies, to the lost, they, listen, you're going to bring happiness to their life because you're bringing Jesus to their life. You're bringing the Father God to their life. You're bringing the Holy Spirit to their life. You're bringing God to their life. And when you explain to them properly what that means and you expose Satan operating in their life and you educate them to help them to see that they've been blaming God for Satan stealing, killing, and destruction in their lives, and you explain to them why God could not really override what they was accepting. And you teach them, you got to put your faith in God. And this is how you do it. You know, like when Jesus was in his hometown, he couldn't do a lot of miracles because of their unbelief and their doubts. When you explain to them and help them to see that in these situations and these scenarios where they was praying and believing God, they were in so much doubt and unbelief. All they did was made a request, but they had nothing to back that request. They had no faith. They, they had little or no faith or wavering faith. So God couldn't move through that. You start teaching them how to build their faith to great faith level, strong faith level. God can operate quick like that. Most people, they come at God with weak or little or no faith. And then the devil turns up the heat they quit and they start saying, oh, this stuff don't work. God didn't hear me. See, we got to educate people on how this thing works. And we are. And there's great joy. Do you know the kind of rewards you stacking up in heaven every time you talk to somebody about God? Every time you help somebody to get closer to God? Every time you're used by God either to plant seed of this gospel of peace? or water that seed that's been planted of this gospel of peace, which your feet are shod with. That means everywhere you go, man, you bring in peace. Everywhere you go, you walking in peace. Everywhere you go, you walking in safety. Huh, glory to God. This is powerful now. And then look at this here. Above all, look at verse 16. Above all. Now, all of these things are powerful. They are a part of who you are. Remember, these are mindsets. These, these are... These are expressions of confidence, conviction, persuasion in battle. But above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, all those missiles, all those javelins, all those arrows that come in the form of thoughts, satanic predictions that he wants you to believe in like you should be believing in the predictions of God, the promises of God. Satan wants you to believe in his predictions in your life, his thoughts in your life, 
He wants you to believe in failure. He wants you to believe in fear. These are the thoughts that he puts in up. He wants you to be, he wants you to believe in, 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 in his thoughts of worry and stress and the end results of these thoughts. But you ain't falling for that no more. You're not falling for that evil trickery no more. You're not falling for those organized evil campaigns against your life that Satan is now, you know, Satan be Satan's organized with his wickedness and organized with his, his evil, deceitful ways, his trickery against your life, against my life. But guess what? As we are, as we are operating and understanding how this armor works and we're looking at Jesus, his tricks don't work no more because we see him now. And we know that we got the power to defeat them. Let's read. Look at this here. And take the helmet of salvation. Now you got to have that shield of faith. That shield of faith, man, it gives Satan a beat down. It quenches your faith. Great faith extinguishes, thwarts, and suppresses all of Satan's attacks. That's why you can walk in peace. That's why you can walk in freedom. That's why you can walk in conflict with your head up. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Because you got on that whole armor. You know how to stand. We're going to teach you how to stand like Jesus stood. Look at this here. This is the word. God says, you are here tonight to learn how to stand. But learn how to stand the way Jesus stood. Victorious all the time. Oh, hallelujah. The greatest stand that Jesus took, standing up on that cross. And then standing up after he came up out the grave three days later. And when he did that, he gave us the ability to stand just like he did. Yeah, we, we taking up our cross right now. We taking up that cross. Man, that cross is getting light right now because we're getting stronger. You got to understand something about life. You got to understand something about walking with God spiritually. It doesn't get easy until you work smarter in the things of God and harder in the things of God. And when you work smarter in the things of God and harder in the things of God, more effort, more determination, then you'll walk strong all the time. And that's the place to be. That's how we do it. We walk in strong. Every time we wake up, oh, it ain't go again. That, that's what that devil be saying. Oh, no, they're up again. And they they wake up praying. Oh, my God. Save me scratch. Oh, my God. It's going to be a rough day today. They wake up praising. They ain't even got out the bed good. And they sitting there thanking God for their goodness. I'm talking about the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. All right, let me move on. Let me move on. Look at this here. All right. And take the helmet of salvation, who salvation. This is this is what this is around your head. You're always thinking about salvation. You're always thanking God that you saved. What does salvation mean? Salvation literally means five things that are in context with what Jesus died to provide for us. Preservation to spend the rest of eternity with God, protection from hurt, harm, and danger for the rest of your life, prosperity for the rest of your life, healing and health for the rest of your life, deliverance from any addiction for the rest of your life. And if you are not experiencing that to the full, it's available. And we're going to teach you how. It's available. And I'm telling you right now, oh God, that helmet of salvation, that devil can't come in there and say, oh, you're not going, you're not going to make it to heaven. You're not going to spend the rest of eternity in, with God. You to this, you to that, you to that, you to this. You're going to be like, Jesus is my ticket to heaven and my faith in him. Or you're not going to walk through life protected from hurt, harm, and danger. You Wait a minute. You understand? I got angels. And more than angels that can whoop you, I got the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit providing oversight. And I got on their armor, and I got faith in their ability and their might. You can't win. I'm not afraid of you. This is, this is what the helmet of salvation, this is what understanding what salvation is and what it does for you. Prosperity. Let me tell you something. First of all, I am prosperous. You can't. I'm not broke. I'm not poor. I eat every day. I got clothes on my back. I got transportation to get to and from wherever I need to go. 
I got a roof over my head and I got more to come and I got more potential and my potential is exploding. I'm a thriver. My life is exhibiting my thrival mentality, my thrival connection with God, my heart, my renewed spirit, my renewed mind is causing me to now speak with authority to my future, to my destiny. And that, that's a thriving destiny. That's a thriving future. All of the craziness that I used to do, that's gone. From this point forward, oh, you dealing with a fully armored child of God. This is what you're saying to Satan. This is what you say. This is how you answer them thoughts of negativity. Man, listen, I got, I got the prosperity of God operating in me. This is a part of salvation. This is that helmet. It's wrapped around your head. It, it, now, it now literally dominates your thinking, dominates who you are, how you see yourself. I'm walking in health. Remember salvation, five things, preservation, protection, prosperity, healing, deliverance. No, no, I am not going to die of cancer, tuberculosis, high blood pressure, kidney disease. I'm not dying of that. Oh, glory to God. But see, you that's salvation. That's what your mind's got to be preoccupied with. When Satan comes at you, attacks your body, attacks your life, and, and he's trying to get you to accept the sickness, accept the No, man, war is on. So what about the doctors? Okay, so the doctors recognize what I'm being attacked by. So now that I know what the attack is, now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to release the power of God, my faith in God's power. I'm going to start walking in the might of God. I resist this. I rebuke this. No, in the name of Jesus, I will not die. I will live and not die. By his stripes, I am healed. Not just physically, I am healed spiritually. You know when you got born again, you got healed spiritually. Your relationship with God got healed. Just, oh, I ain't even breaking this down. I'm on the surface right now. When you gave your life to Jesus Christ and got born again, born from up above, when you got the spirit and the nature of God good in you, the goodness of God in you, the essence of God in you, again, the nature of God in you, the ways of God recreated your spirit from that wicked, dark, nasty, vicious heart. Now you got that heart of compassion, the heart of love, the heart of favor, the heart of God. Your heart was healed. Spiritually, you were healed. Your relationship with God healed. Your relationship with yourself healed. You know we were sick without God. We're healed now. You got to accept that. You healed. Your relationship with others healed. Your relationship with, with disease Heal. It has no authority over you. All of the things that Satan was using to steal, kill, and destroy your health. Done. You out of that realm. Now it's time to build in the realm of healing. Build healing in your environment. Spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically, financially. Everything. Everything you do and are. God says, it's been healed. Now we release our faith in that. And we start doing what God says to do to make that to bear fruit. Then deliverance. Who delivered from every addictive spirit, every addictive in event, every in in addictive, <laughs> addictive thing that can be attached to addiction, whether it's food, lust, stealing, lying. Cheating, we've been delivered from all of that. Addictions defeated. You know, I, 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 as a matter of fact, I was I was talking today to a young man that said, you know what I mean, that he he's 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 an addict. Says, you are. He says, yeah. He says, you know, I'm always going to be an addict. I said, when's the last time you had a drink or a drug or whatever you was addicted to? His, his addiction of choice was drugs and alcohol. When was the last time you had drugs and alcohol? He said about 13 years. I don't think you're addicted no more. 
I think you're walking free. But see, he's been taught once an addict, always an addict. Mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Now, I know that's what they teach. But that ain't what Jesus teach. That ain't what the Father God teach. That ain't what the Holy Spirit teach. That ain't what your Bible teach. Your Bible says once you've been set free, you free. So now, what's the proof of freedom? Keep walking free. If your addiction was lying, stop lying. If you could put 100 days of stop lying, why would you choose to lie and go back to that? That addiction, that bondage. Stay walking in the truth. I'm just using lying as an example. I could use a lot of other things, but you know, we on we, we got a good groove going. Who just said? So take unto you the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Okay, look at this here. He said, above all, all of these things are the above all. The helmet, the helmet of salvation, the shield of or actually the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the spirit. Everything that deals with your mind protecting you, engaging you, causing you to go on the offensive. And then the word of God, the sword of the spirit. The more you learn this word, especially them verses that promises you victory and success, that shows you that you have authority over Satan, that shows you have, you have power over Satan in Jesus' name. That's above everything else. Now you got all of this working. Then look at this here, verse 18. Praying always. Praying once a week. Are well, you in the game, but you got to do more than that. Praying once a day. You in the game, good. You praying once a day. That ain't, that ain't enough. David prayed and praised multiple times a day. Paul prayed multiple times a day. Jesus prayed all the time. Jesus went away for hours in prayer. Praying for you, praying for me. You say, well, what do I pray for? Pray for your family. Pray for your friends. Make sure you start with praying for yourself, okay? Pray for the Christians all around the world. You understand what I'm saying? Pray that. Pray, pray for God's strength to, to, to turn the problems around. I mean, you pray for a lot of things. And then pray those prayers every single day, three, four times a day. But when you pray those prayers, pray them in the form of thanking God for doing these things. All right. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Look at Paul says in verse 19. And for me that look at what look at Paul. Paul said, look, you ain't got to pray for me. You pray for me that utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. All right, so let's back up. Oh no, my time is all gone. My Oh my God, I can't believe that my time is all gone. All right, so, so watch this here. All right, I, you know, I can't, I can't, I, I just, I can't do it. I can't, I can't leave without breaking down one word. All right, so I'm going to do this here. You know, it says, having done all the stand, stand with your loins gored about with truth. Okay, so I'm going to deal with just that word stand. Okay, and then we're talking about the loins gored about with truth. So watch this here. I'm just going to read this here. We'll be done in like a few moments. Look at this here. That word stand is the Greek word histamine. It's kind of like what we get. You know what I mean? The word histamine, you know, like when when you when you get attacked by some kind of allergy and you, you have an allergic reaction and they say you need some antihistamine. And it, it'll block that thing. It'll stop that thing in its tracks. Stand to cause or make to stand. Or another that's definition number one. In other words, God is saying we have the authority and the ability to make you stand. When I read this, I was like, oh yeah, this is this is me right here. So, so number two, to bid to stand. Or in other words, God is offering us the ability to stand against all of the tricks 
and all of the attacks of the devil, all of his evil trickery, all of his deceptions. Look at this here, number three. To help a thing to keep his place. Now, th this is what this word stand means. And God says, having done all the stand, stand. God says, put on the whole armor of God and you'll be able to stand. Or in other words, you'll be able to keep your place. Listen, your place is the place of victory. All right, definition number four. To be kept intact. In other words, God says, I am able and I am going to, I promise to keep you and your family intact. Look at this here. Number five, to escape in safety. So standing, a part of the expression of standing in the name of Jesus with the armor of God on is God says, I'm going to cause you to literally escape in safety regardless of the attack of the enemy. This is some powerful stuff. This right here, I'm going to tell you right now, this right here is like, oh my goodness. Do you see what God is saying? God is like, look, I got you. Okay, look at this here. Number six, to uphold or sustain the authority or force of anything. So remember now, you and I are operating in the authority and the force of Almighty God. God says, I am going to help you. I am with you to help you sustain that authority and also uphold it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it permanent. <laughs> okay, I mean, this just keeps getting better. Look at this here, number seven. I'm going to set you in place and I'm going to place you in balance. Let me tell you something. You get balance in your life and all things. Game changer. Okay. Look at this here. Number eight. Number eight means to stand immovable. So when you choose to stand, when you believe in the power of God to stand, when you believe and the power of God to help you stand when you believe that you can stand against all the wiles of the enemy. Game changer. Your life's taking on a whole different trajectory right now. Your life is taking on the expression of thrival mentality and thrival lifestyle. Okay, look at this here. Number nine. Number nine. This is this is this is awesome. Standing means you're going to continue safe and sound, and you're gonna stand unharmed. Did you get that? I got this. When I got this one here, I was like, oh, shucks. fear's out the window. Phobia's out the window. Because God is in the heart. God is, God is now dominating and consuming everything. All right, look at this here, look at this here. This is good, this is so good. This is so good. Number 10, oh God, watch this here. To stand ready or prepared. See, see, by the time you get here, you know you got that armor on. You know you ready. You know you've been prepared by God. Life's circumstances are nothing but opportunities to show forth the preparedness that you've gotten from God. Looking at Jesus is just opportunities for you now to literally always be ready. You know, we're we talking about the craziness that's going on in the world. You know, these mass shootings and all of that stuff that's happening in America, you know, in the Asian community. These mass shootings, that's you know, just crazy. Young, young, young six-year-old kid shoots his teacher. Little four-year-old boy walking in his apartment complex with his dad's gun, loaded, not chambered, but loaded, walking around the complex, four years old. Some craziness going on out there, but you are. God says, I am blessing you to stand. His to me, I am blessing you to be ready and prepared. Oh, let me tell you something, child of God. You just got to be aware of your surroundings, you just got to be aware, and you got to and, and you got to pray, God, help me stay alert. All right, we're gonna see it. Number 11. Number 11 says, 
to be of a steadfast mind, alert, focused. Okay, number 12, I'm almost there. Of the quality, we're talking about standing now, having done all the stand, of the quality of one who does not hesitate and does not waver in battle. Oh, that's all of this right here? Talking about me. You gotta, you gotta claim this for yourself. You got to say, all of that standing, that's me. That's me. You want to see this in action? You want to see this in operation? You look at Jesus. Then you imitate it. You do just like you see Jesus do. You got to now, I got to now, we got to take all 12 of these definitions and stand. All 12 of these definitions and manifest it. This is a game changer. This is a life changer. And then this whole armor, this is the armor of life. The Holy Spirit said it's the armor of life. So it affects every area of your thinking. Every area. It affects your thinking. It affects your heart. It affects your, your, your ability to maneuver and, and to, 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 to express and enlarge and multiply. It, it, literally, it literally prepares you to bring peace. Yeah, but this is the powerful, all right? So the next time we get together, we're going to deal with girt, loins girded with truth. And we're going to break down truth and, and, and being girded, having your stuff <laughs> so that when you deal with any situation, any circumstance, you are equipped with the truth of God. You are equipped with the salvation of God. You are equipped with the righteousness of God. You're, you're equipped with the peace of God. You're equipped with the faith of God. You're equipped with the word of God. And now you praying and worshiping and living and manifesting the promises of God. Not just for yourself, but for your friends, for your family, for your coworkers, for your enemies. What does that look like? We know it looks like Jesus. Let me tell you something else, and I close with this here. What does this look like? It looks like you. It looks like you in developmental mode. It looks like you developing well and enthusiastically developing, excited about God. It looks like you getting a handle on truth and getting a handle on success. It looks like you manifesting the overcoming ability of Almighty God. It looks like you bearing the fruit of increase in material goods, increase in success, increase in every area of your life, starting with your identity change. You accepting God's perception and vision and decree of your identity, accepting God's decree and perception of your position and place in life, accepting God's endowment of authority, the authority of God in your life through Jesus, accepting all of that truth bringing you to a place of fearlessness. You got God with you and you are designated and decreed by almighty God as an overcomer. Need I say more? Suited up with that armor, understanding and learning how to rebuke Satan the way Jesus did, how to resist Satan the way Jesus did, and now you're going to tell everybody that you see Satan oppressing, possessing, absolutely just bringing just agitation and, and annoyances in their lives, setting their record straight and getting them back in touch with God so that they can experience the happiness, the joy, and the peace of God. Yeah, you got this peace that passes understanding, and it's all because of Jesus Christ. Well, my time is all gone. Hallelujah. Come on, let us pray. Let's seal this right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just praise, worship, and magnify your holy and majestic name. We glorify you right now, oh God, because we are learning. We glorify you right now because we accept your truth. And we thank you right now 
We thank you for salvation. We thank you for righteousness. We thank you for your word. We thank you for peace. We thank you for faith. We thank you, Lord God, for the ability to release all of this armament, this spiritual armament and weaponry. We thank you for being able to release it through prayer, through supplication. We praise you and magnify you that we can give you praise, glory, and honor for it, with it, through it, and in all of the victories that you've manifested in our lives. And in all of the prayers you've answered, not only for us personally, but for our friends, for our family, for our enemies, for all, Lord, the revival that you have manifested in our lives. And so, Lord God, we thank you right now. Our desire is to grow. Our desire is to flow. And it's all because we know who you are. We know who we are. And we know what you are making us. And we are so grateful. We're glad about it. So we just bless you. We sanctify you. And we honor you today, Father. We honor you today, Lord Jesus. We honor you today, Holy Spirit. Thank you, thank you, thank you. These things, Heavenly Father, these things, Lord Jesus, these things, Holy Spirit, we pray in the name of Jesus, in Jesus' authority, we call it done in Jesus' name. Well, my time is all gone. I'm Apostle Edward B. Haynes, Resurrection Life Christian Center Church International here in Hartford, Connecticut. We meet at the Northwest Boys and Girls Club in Hartford on Granby Street, and we just would love to have you come and fellowship with us this coming Sunday. Come on in Sunday. We start at 1030. You will love praise and worship. Oh, God. It is so good. You will love the compassion, the love of our people. Oh, it is really so good. And you will love the word of God. If you've enjoyed this, wait till you see it live. It's absolutely awesome. We just dine at the table of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and we get full and fed. And then, glory to God, we go out there and we shed and bread. Glory to God. We just love you again. Hey, if you uh, feel impressed by the Holy Spirit, visit the description box. You can partner with us. Help us get this gospel around the world. We bless you. We honor you. We pray for you. And we encourage you now. Having done all the stand, stand with that whole armor on. God bless you until next time. Shalom.